Thank you. That was wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Who was not here last night? All right. I knew. You watched it online. Okay, good. Look, I had people praying from Connecticut to Texas to whenever for y'all. Man, you have something special here. I so missed this. Now I have to be the bearer of bad news, brother. This does not go unnoticed by the enemy. I've watched it for years in church. The presence of God comes in, and then the religious side just battles. I've already had words from some of my people, seducing spirits, Jezebel, Leviathan, water spirits, all kinds of things are coming against this. I'm just giving you a warning. I like to be the fun guy, not the... But sometimes I have to step into the office of a prophet and tell you the way it is. You're going to get challenged on this weekend, brother. It's already started. Somebody's already talked to me about a conversation of you don't need any of that stuff from last night. And I don't care if people agree with me. God got rid of my people, pleasing the Spirit, a long time ago. But you're going to get challenged on it, brother. Maybe not to your face. Behind your back. I'm just warning you. You're going to have to make some tough calls, brother. Now, if I leave here and you can tell everybody don't listen to a word he says, I, you won't hurt my feelings, brother. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> But there's already rumblings, brother. I should have started off with something a little lighter. You know, I was I was on staff at a church years ago, and somebody brought a book a book in by uh, not Derek Prince, who I highly respect, but Joseph Prince on grace and. You know, we had half of the leadership on this side, and we had half of the leadership on this side, back and forth. But the pastor wouldn't deal with it, and it fractured the leadership. You know, sometimes, you know, when I was on staff, I'd, I'd say, you know, this, this, and this is going on. Let's just throw it all on the table and deal with it. Oh, no, we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Thank you. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. I don't want the enemy to fracture your church, brother. It is something special. I say last night when I stepped on the... I was just overwhelmed with the presence. A needle. You could hear a needle hit the floor now. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. Because in reality, that's the only thing that matters. Father, I come against the things that are already just wanting to come against what Pastor Kevin is doing. You know, I had a comment if there's a, a tendency of to have a new pastor every three years. That's not by coincidence. That's demonic. So Heavenly Father, do I have permission, Kevin? I have permission from the head of this ministry to come against that spirit that tries to run pastors through here every three years. You're at the three year mark. Can I touch 
touch you. All those things that come against him, speak against him, weigh heavy on him, I command it to come off in the name of Jesus. You know, I said last night I wanted to pray for him and his wife, and of course the enemy made it where his wife couldn't come today. Not her fault. Totally from the enemy. But she's listening online, so I speak a blessing over Lisa too. Any of those past church hurts that have come against you, even ones that are going to try to come up now, Father, I break it off of both of them. You know, I never met Pastor Kevin before last night, but man, I had a great time with him. He's a lovable guy. But he really wants the Holy Spirit to have the show. I really want the Holy Spirit to have the show. I never want a David show. I want the Holy Spirit show. So just bless this time together, Father. I, I always call this rule number one when I teach deliverance and get in the habit of it. This is what I do before every session. Heavenly Father, I apply the blood of Jesus north, south, east, and west, above, above and below. I bind all retaliation transference and accusation in the name of Jesus. Everybody agree? Yeah. Hold on one second. By the way, it's been working with me for a long time. Sent me a message. This is what she said. Already been interceding for conference. Leviathan will be there. Jezebel hit me too. Addictions, control, manipulation. We already ran into that last night. Python, we ran into that last night. Water spirits being close to water anyway. It's been fasting for you. Just keep your heads up. Then Connie had talked to me about the seducing spirit, but also the spirit of God here. So there's a jockeying in the atmosphere in here even right now. I can watch it back and forth. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I woke up at 5.30 this morning and went, oh God, I don't know what we're doing today. Oh, it's changed about 20 times since I've gotten here. On a good note, I've met uh, a lady that used to go to church with me years ago. She's here. She walked up. I can't say it. I know that lady from somewhere. And then she used to go to church with me, and she comes to church here. And she gave me part of her story. It's just a whole divine story. I'm sure she'll share it with you. All right. How about we... I, I wasn't planning on using PowerPoint. When I redid my PowerPoint, I just left the rest of it. And I think that was just God saying we need to cover some things. So... And before we got here, my wife and Sissy started telling me what I needed to cover. All right. When you do deliverance, I never want you to be fearful. Like I say, I, I really love Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no foe can withstand. But the Bible says we also must walk circumspectly. We're aware. We're not fearful of demons, but we're going to watch. And a lot of people don't watch. Now, when Kelly, who I call Sissy, I just talked about you, girl, Melinda. <laughs> you missed it. So I went with Melinda to church years ago. But anyway, when, 
when Sissy started working with me in deliverance, um, let me see. Don't let me leave anything out. Her husband, Tony, travels out of town a lot. And, but she started working with me some, and then the horse got lame. The dog got run over. One or two cats went missing. And she calls me up. She goes, I don't think this ministry is for me. I said, no, 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 no. So we went out to her house, prayed over the house. So I'm covering two topics. I want you to pray over your house. Who has not prayed over their house? Anybody? Okay, you got homework. So we went to their house, and we were praying over it. We found a couple things that we thought didn't need to be there. And so in the Bible, they would, like in Acts, Acts 1919 party, you've heard of that? They, they would bring all the occultic stuff in from the city, into, and, and they would burn it. So we were going to do that. We had just a handful of things, and Tony has this bucket off of a front end, off of a tractor sitting down the hill, so we were going to stuff this stuff in there, light it on fire. My wife had the lighter, and she just, my wife likes to play with stuff, and she would flick the, the lighter on one of those grill lighters, and we were about, I don't know, 100 yards away from the house, and we walked down there and click, 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 wouldn't light. I said, well, let's go into the shed here. Tony has a new uh, butane lighter. Click, click, click. Well, maybe it's out of gas. We're digging around. The light wouldn't work. <laughs> Found the other bottle of gas, screwed it on there. Said, well, let's go back up to the house and get some matches. Now, the enemy's fighting the whole time. We get up to the house. <laughs> Julie clicks the lighter and... <laughs> It works. Back down the hill. Click, click, click. In the name of Jesus, I command that lighter to work. We burned it up. The enemy stops at nothing to get you to back off. And like I say, if you jump in with this, brother, it's going to be tough. Guard the anointing here, brother. You got something special. If I lived here, I'd come here, brother. I would. I was on staff at a church as a deliverance pastor. I can't tell you how many times the power of God would flow through that place. You know, and I, I'd give them warnings. I mean, God gives certain people gifts for a reason. I'd say, this is attached to the property, this is attached to the property, this is attached to the property. And they give you the... Not my place to deal with it. But I'd tell the one in charge, you need to deal with it. All that anointing dropped down. Here's the end of the story. They just had a hostile takeover of the whole church. I'm talking about they excommunicated all the elders. I mean, we talked about some of this last night. The elders were going to have a meeting, or come to the meeting with the pastor and, and the, the board. They had armed guards in place. You can't come here. You're being trespassed. You show up again, you're going to jail.
So I'm telling you, the enemy doesn't like it when that anointing is so strong. Sorry, I'm being Debbie Downer. <laughs> but I have to be real. Let's do some slides. All right. You bring the uh, PowerPoint up. Like I say, this was... Um, Go ahead to the next one. All right, so praying over property, we just talked about that. Now, when I pray over the property, um, I walk the property line, anoint it. You don't have to have Bible bookstore stuff. You can get some olive oil, pray over it. I walk the property line, anoint the corners, anoint the the house, doors, windows, just ask that the presence of the Holy Spirit be over it. Anything contrary to the Holy Spirit has to go in the name of Jesus. You know, before I knew anything about this stuff, I used to have dogs from two different time spans would sit in the living room and look in the corner. I thought, man, that's weird. Look, man, they don't, they see stuff. So I prayed over it, and they don't sit there and look at it anymore. I, uh, those dogs are all long, long gone. You might have to pray for your property multiple times. Now, people know what I do. I have people that drive by and place curses over my property. And the Lord has... <laughs> you could look. Yeah, it's true. So I had an impromptu deliverance one night. This guy brought this young man over to my thing, and it was a wild one. But shortly afterwards, I'd be doing deliverance, and I'd look over in the corner, about this tall, solid black, was this demon. He was short, had a big Buddha belly, and a flat head. Go in the name of Jesus. Next time I'm doing deliverance, I look over in the corner. I said, my buddy's back. <laughs> Go in the name of Jesus. That went on for weeks. And then finally, the, the guy that had brought the guy over, was he was the youth pastor where I was at, on staff at, and he says, I figured out what your problem was. I said, what? He goes, you know, I brought such and such over the other week. He got offended at you. And every time he would drive past your place, he would place a witchcraft curse over it. Now the Holy Spirit would show it to me every time, but it quit after that. He repented. He never repented to me. He repented to, to the youth pastor. You know, there, there was another time um, I was doing a deliverance and the Lord told me to walk the property again now God does everything contingently if you don't do the first step he's not going to give you a second step right so he said walk the property so I went out there and I walked I bet 30 feet and then all of a sudden he gave me a, a vision of my property now my property is kind of long rectangular piece and it was divided like that more like a yin yang symbol so I prayed against it. I walked down around the hill. I got down near the bottom. And I'm telling you, man, it was like I had lead in my legs. I could barely walk. I was praying against it. And we were doing deliverance that night. And Sissy was with me that night with a, a couple of other ladies. And the one lady says, God says, we need to walk your property. I said, well, I did it earlier, but I'm not going to question God. Let's go. We go walking. We get around the same spot. Sissy goes, oh, my gosh, I can barely walk. I said, let me guess, your legs feel like lead. She goes, yeah. So we prayed against it. And what it was, somebody placed another witchcraft curse on my property. So just be obedient of when the Holy Spirit tells you to do something. Okay? 
if you need to pray over the church again, that's your call. Oh, man. I'm going to tell a story on myself. One time the Lord says, walk the property. He says, go down and buy the most expensive big bottle of olive oil they got at the store. Now, this is long before pre-COVID. But I walked down there and I walked into Walmart and I saw the biggest bottle, the most expensive one. It was $23.99. I said, God. I said, that's a lot of money. He says, you're cheap. I want the good stuff this time. <laughs> yes, sir, I am cheap. So I, but I did. I was obedient. And I anointed the whole property with it. So whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, however he tells you to do it, just do it. Next slide. Dealing with children. Children are easy. Now, if it's your own flesh and blood, it works. If it's legally, they're in your custody, it works. If the grandparents have legal control of the children, you have full legal authority. You're the head of the household. So, the story here is I have three children. Two are alive, one's with Jesus. My second child lived 16 days. It was a genetic thing. It wasn't fixable. She died. Doctor said, we can't tell you if that'll happen again. Maybe this one was a fluke by being abnormal. Maybe your first daughter was a fluke by being normal. So, <laughs> having another child caused a lot of fear. You know, my wife wouldn't tell anybody she was pregnant because we were not make that first ultrasound because that's where it went askew last time. And fortunately, everything was fine. Now, from a young age, my son was consumed with fear. His fault? Nope. My fault? Nope. My wife's fault? Nope. But it went straight from us to him. Trauma is a horrible thing. You know, I wouldn't wish a child dying on anybody. So he was about six years old. It was about midnight. He's laying on his back, dead asleep. And I walked into the room, was praying over the room, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit goes, you're the head of the household. He's got a spirit of fear. Deal with it. Once again, do we have to holler and scream at demons? Now, my son's dead asleep. And this is what I did. Spirit of fear, I'm the head of the household. You have to leave my son now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'm not a proponent of this, but you've seen the old Dracula movies where he's laying in the coffin and he goes, that's what he did to me. Raised every hair on my arm, brother. <laughs> I said, woo. I said, go. Eyes rolled back, flopped down. What changed the next day? Gone. Mess with your kids, man. In a good way. You have full legal authority. Especially up to the age of 18, if they still live in your house, under your house, there's still some stuff you can affect on that. You know, my, I, I walked past my daughter's room today, she was probably about 13 or so. And she was sleeping, and I just said, Lord. I repent for the lust, the pornography, and I don't want that going to my kids. Come off in the name of Jesus. 
She started rolling in bed like that. Never woke up. See, that was my fault. I was the head. You know, so when I got thrown into deliverance, I was dealing with all that stuff, but it didn't discount me. But God wouldn't leave me the same either. You know, some people want to argue about dealing with their strongholds, and I said, fine, keep it. Your kids will deal with it. I'll use a little guilt on them. <laughs> I don't care. If I've got somebody, I know they're mad at somebody else, I'll call them up to minister with me because they have to get right with the Lord. I'll do that too. So pray over your children. Always at a whisper so the enemy can hear it. You don't have to get in your child's face and holler and scream at them. That'll do more damage than good. Next slide, please. We already talked with somebody about this this morning. Martial arts, yoga, acupuncture. Oh, man. All occultic stuff. I've talked with friends. I never did martial arts, but I had a couple Christian friends, and they got pretty high up, and they said, look, man, when you get there, you build an altar, you make sacrifices to the demon for more power. He said, how to get out of it? Because that's what they do. Next slide. Witchcraft. We talked about this a little bit last night. Horoscopes, Ouija board, tarot cards. Every, every group has these things. Indians, you have animal spirits. Everybody, a lot of times you see dream catchers. In the African realm, they did roots. In the islands, you had voodoo. Latino community, you have Santa Rio, which is the white magic, then you have the Palo Bombay, which is the black magic. All this stuff brings death, confusion, back pain, headaches. That's where you'll find that snake, that python wraps around the back. Right over the shoulder blades, you'll get the, the eyes of the cobra. Um, like I say last night, we had, I've had people hiss like snakes, slither on the ground like a snake. Um, but always confusion. And then and they figure out why they have a hard time with this. Now, that being said, I mean, I'm not fearful of witchcraft stuff. I'd much rather deal with a witchcraft spirit than a religious spirit all day long, brother. <laughs> religious demons are so nasty. So nasty. And that's why that one pastor would text me two, three o'clock in the morning. I was so under his skin. I had his demon, I had his religion, religious demon so wound up. And I just finally told him, leave me alone. Next slide, please. All right. I always get myself in trouble with this one, brother. Freemasonry. Mason, Shriners, Eastern Star, Job's Daughters, D. Malay. You know, a lot of churches in town, you know, you'll have Freemasons in it. Um, now, here's an excellent resource. It's, on the, it's, on the, it's not in your notes, so you might want to write this one down. His name is Selwyn Stevens. He is Jubilee resources.org um, he has a thing of reading through all the different levels in Freemasonry and breaking the curses off of it there's some really neat curses in there like if you divulge these secrets we'll flay your eyes open we'll spill your guts out we'll place them on the dung heap and it's in there man now, from a personal experience, I, I, when I was young, my, or probably maybe before I was born, both my parents, my dad was a, a Mason, a Shriner, and my mom was an Eastern Star. Great people, but we do stuff out of ignorance. You know, I'd look in my dad's drawer, I'd see his 
little different paraphernalia. But with all these curses, like there's one curse that's either in the east and west pelican degree or something like that, you're making a vow to Abaddon. It's the angel of the abyss. It's a demonic entity. If I divulge this secret, he has permission to mess with me. And you'll see a super high, we're talking about seducing spirits. Connie gave me that one this morning. A lot higher rate of a molestation in Freemasonry. And then unbeknownst to me, I, I, I was at a, a conference with this one lady who was a high-level voodoo witch, and she says, oh, there's a super secret Freemasonry where they do all the really wicked stuff to children. So what happens is you, have, you can come in with your Bible, your Koran, your... Um, the Jewish one. Um, there's, an, uh, there's another. It's the mysticism one. Anyway, doesn't matter. And you, you can place your hand, you make the vow. But what's happening is you're mixing the holy with the profane. And that's never good. So that allows that seduction, seduction, abuse spirit to come in. I can remember one day I was praying with the Lord and the Lord gave me a vision and in the vision was this pyramid and all of a sudden a strong wind came blowing at the pyramid and the whole top of the pyramid kind of went to dust and sitting on top of the pyramid was a gargoyle. I was like, man, what's that? I was talking with a buddy of mine, we meet with each other and pray, and I said, it's got to be Freemasonry. He goes, yeah, that's what I get. So along the way, I got Selwyn Stevens stuff. I went through it, and he'll tell you, read through it multiple times. I've read through it several times. Every time I get a headache, and I'm not one that ever gets headaches. So I had another lady one time. I don't know why I'm sticking along on this one, but we are. Had a lady come in, make an appointment for deliverance. The day before, the Holy Spirit told me, he says, call Stacy and get the name of those Masonic spirits. And you'll recognize some of them, Horus, Anubis, Isis, all these different things. And I wrote them down on a piece of paper. And I just said them, on, my count, on the other side of my counter. We were ministering with this lady the next day and we were asking her questions. She goes, oh, my, great, uh, my granddad was a 33rd degree Mason. And the Holy Spirit says, grab that list of names. Horus, Isis, Anubis. This lady went to a full-blown seizure. Now, she was totally aware. I mean, she stiffened up like a board. And she goes, I can't stop it. I said, I know it's just a demon. Was it her fault? No. Did it pass down generationally? Yes. We cast them out. Oh, the miraculously, the seizure stopped. So that's what we're dealing with. All right, next. All right, so here's... Baphomet is a spirit of Antichrist. You'll see it with a lot of different of the organizations, Freemasonry being one. Uh, if you ever see something demonic, just watch the halftime show at the Super Bowl. You'll see all this stuff. Next. All right. Now, I'm going to run through some of this fairly quickly. But I already got hit on some of this with somebody this morning. So when the Lord threw me off on this thing, we started talking about it a little bit last night. There's a thing, and that's the way the Lord's designed us to deal with trauma. And I like to say I've heard all the worst traumas on the planet. We can't stand it. So we dissociate 
The term is called dissociative identity disorder. The old term was multiple personalities. The psych books would say it's very rare. I say it's super, 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 super common. I ask people, do you lose chunks of time? Do you feel like a light switch? This is where it gets a little complicated and delivered sometimes. You can't treat somebody that's been that damaged and just go in there and cast out all the spirits. It just doesn't work that way. You have to deal with sections because it's literally like dealing with multiple people. Now, <laughs> you'll still get some big arguments in the deliverance community that altars are demons. No, altars are people. Now, where the enemy makes it complicated is, let's say we have one person, and they're divided into three parts. If I start casting the spirit of anger out, it'll hop compartments. So we really have to heal this part. We have the Lord to heal this part. And we have to heal this part. What you'll find out with some of those people is they'll have short-term success with deliverance. But then they have to come back. And then they wonder, well, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. It's just part of the process. So the first testimony I read last night, this lady was talking about, and I said it. I didn't hit on it. She says, the altars would talk in my head. This lady came to me and she said I could sell, share anything from her sessions. <laughs> she had two ladies in her head. I think they were called Doris and Peggy and they would have arguments. And she got this constant noise in her head. Now normally when you're dealing with altars, this might be Susie age three, Susie age five, Susie age six. But we're all unique individuals so it all acts differently. So we would do deliverance with this lady. Connie helped me with her a number of times. Um, the voices would quit. Then, you know, six months later, she goes, well, I'm starting to hear something else. I said, okay, did we do something wrong? No, we just had to deal with some more. What's really fun is I had to deal, one of her altars was a pre-verbal baby. You want to try closed doorways on that? That was really tough because it couldn't speak. But it would grunt in agreement. See, God's got infinite number of ways to fix people. I can promise if you want to be delivered, you want to get dealing with those loss of chunks of times and different things, we have to allow the Lord to do that. So how does that work? Now, I'm going to cover two topics at the same time. We just talked about dissociation. Now we also have schizophrenic spirits, which is what's up right here. It comes from rejection. I've watched it in a number of people. Rejection likes to hang out here around the belly button. And it's just like through all this trauma and different things over time, it's like these lines that come up. And that schizophrenic spirit likes to hang out right here. And the best way I can describe it is, you know, you probably have a light switch back there with probably about six different switches on it, right? They'll flip moods like this. Now that part's demon, but it acts a lot like a multiple personality. So spirits associated with that, whether it's a schizophrenic spirit or the protector uh, or the dissociative identity, you'll have a protector, defender, and especially with the dissociation, a, a spirit of personality change. So what, what the enemy does, it tries to give himself job security. Behavior has meaning from last night, right? So if we get in a certain situation, we get rejected, abandoned, lonely, certain stimulus, we don't want to deal with it. So that spirit of personality change, we'll, we'll let this one deal with it. 
or we'll let this one deal with it. Now, I listened to this one guy one time that had this lady. It kind of worked to her benefit, but not, no, not really. Because the enemy's thing is always to steal, kill, destroy. But this lady was going to med school, so she'd have a different part of herself study for a different class. <laughs> so when she had a test for that class, that personality had done all the, all the studying for it. So, but when it gets time to get rid of that, the enemy's going to say, see, you need me. And that's where have a, certain people have a hard time wanting to get rid of their demon. So uh, I think Connie was with me this one day. We were praying this one lady. And I looked at her and I said, you got a certain demon. And I said, this is the picture the Holy Spirit shows me. It's this real kind of middle-aged, suave, debonair guy. He's got a French beret. He's just really, you know, it. And I said, he acts like he's your friend, but he's there to still kill, destroy. Don't, don't make no bones about it. And then I started talking about something else. And she goes, well, he is really smart, and he does speak French to me. I said, what? Man, he has some job security there, brother. I'm your friend. I'm smart. I'm cool. I'm suave. I said, no, you need to get rid of him. He's there to steal and kill, destroy. That's how crafty the enemy is. That's a lot to take in, man. I, don't, I had no plan on talking on this today. But that's what you're going to run into. You're going to run into the people like last night with a blood covenant with Satan. I had some other high-level, super high-level witchcraft people. I've had several. You call them SRAs. That's just short for satanic ritual abuse. It's real. It's in your area. And you have to deal with them. Not fun, takes a long time, and you need somebody gifted in doing it. That's what you're getting in. That's what you get into, brother. Next slide. We covered that. Next. Just various spiritual run into Ahab, Jezebel. And Jezebel's not always a woman. Incubus, succubus, those are spirits. They will actually have sex with you. Lilith, Molech. Molech is a god, the demon god behind abortion. Because in the Bible days, they would light up the idol, cherry red, throw the babies on the fire and burn them up. That's why I say you walk your children through the fire. That's what they're talking about. Seducing, sexual and non-sexual. Counterfeit we talked about last night. Music. Who's heard of Aleister Crowley? You have. He had a couple titles. The evilest man on earth, the wickedest man in the world. He built, his house. He, he built a house on top of a property where the uh, church had caught on fire and burned everybody up inside of it. Jimmy Page, he wrote Stairway to Heaven bought that property he wrote that song with automatic handwriting which is demon writing it it is so put together and it's probably the most popular rock song on the planet everybody knows it people in church oh hi, stairway to heaven that's a lovely song they play it backwards and different things. It's so intricately made, it's impossible for a human to do it. It's all demonic. Now remember, who, who was Lucifer? Worship leader, man. He, he was a walking, talking instrument. I've dealt with the, um, I mentioned it last night. I had a rapper come in. He woke up on a pentagram with the people in the black robes walking out of the room. 
when he came to me, he was sitting in, the, in his recliner, and the demons just threw him on the floor. You know, you don't need to go see that guy. Tough stuff. Have to be careful what you listen to. We talked about religious. Sorry, I think we're about done. Next slide. Higher ranking spirits. Um, I'll quickly just cover this. You know, God has a hierarchy of angels. The enemy has a hierarchy. Spiritual wickedness in high places and all those different things. Um, the enemy can never create anything of his own. He just twists and perverts what God's already created. So there are high-level spirits. I've run across some. Um, if it's not your calling, and that one's a calling to deal with high-level stuff, don't do it. Some people get a little knowledge. Oh, I have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, which is all true. If you want to go try to jump on that mega spirit of, of perversion in Hollywood, if you ain't called to it, you are going to get tore up. All right, so I'm going to cover. I was over at Orlando one time at the Gaylord Palms. I walked in, had another pastor's brother work there. He was just going to show us around. I walked into the main atrium area. There was like, a hundred people walk around in karate outfits. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is not good. And they go, what are you talking about? I said, this is all demonic. I'm not against self-defense, exercise. I am against yoga, martial arts, and some other stuff. But we were walking down this hallway, and the Lord opened my eyes, and I saw something, and I recognized it. Now, I'm not a huge video guy, but who remembers the game Mortal Kombat? old school huh so anyway I saw this outline of this thing this dude was 12 foot tall his shoulders are about this wide he's standing there like this and he's guarding where you go to the exhibit area and I said God I've seen that before but I don't know his name and the first thing the Lord says because he, he showed it to me he goes, don't even think about it. So I, I walked by and acknowledged this thing. We went down, did what we were doing, we were coming back. I said, I wonder if my buddy's still there. Sure enough, he's still standing there, and he watched me. I could see him, he could see me, and I nodded at him. But <laughs> you stay there. I went home, looked it up. All right, who remember? It's the big kind of purpley guy, bald head, with the ponytail, forearms. His name was Goro. That is a real demon. And if you want to submit to that altar for hours, is that going to mess you up? It will. I'm just shooting straight with you. We had what I would call an innocuous game. My brother's a pastor, and his kids had some James Bond. It was a shoot 'em up thing, not like the ones they have today. But you'd shoot them so many times, and the screen would turn kind of red. My my little kids were little, and I thought, well, you know, my brother's kids played with it. I'll you know, I'll let them play with it. They went from loving each other to just beating the snot out of each other. <laughs> my wife walked in. Nope. It all calmed down. And that was an, an, a, a minor thing compared to the stuff they had today. Next. Slide. All right, we'll talk about this for a second. I want, I want to pray with people. Word of wisdom, discernment. All right, we've got to start understanding each other's gifts. Some people here. Some people see, some people feel, some people just know. Instead of being competitive or scared, we need to just understand. You're light years ahead because you were talking about you have a whole group that does the seer 
the seer group. I've never been to a church that did anything like that. Um, so like I said last night, people that know me call me up, ask me a question, and go, okay, what picture did, I, did God give you? And then we'll discuss it, figure out what the Holy Spirit says. You know, we were talking last night, really don't do this by yourself. Jesus sent them out by twos. What's funny is I'll, I, I see the picture so well sometimes, I, I, I look right over the meeting. <laughs> Connie and Stacy or Kelly all sit there and shake their head and go, this is what it means. I said, oh, duh. That's why we feed off of each other. If I'm ministering with, with uh, Connie and she gets the discernment, why would I want to deal with it? I say, up, oh, you're up. You deal with it. God gave you the discernment. I make every new person that works with me deal with a demon the first night. Because invariably the demon wants to make it really tough for him. And I've had him say, oh, this was too tough. You deal with it. I said, no, I'm in charge. I told you to do it. You deal with it. And they go, yeah, you're right. I'll, I'll do it. Because if they can get you to back off once, they'll back you off again. Next, I think I'm, I think I'm about done. <clears throat> I'm done. You want to see an interesting picture? That's me talking to a group of people. Look closely at the screen. Do you see anything? What do you see? See what? I can't hear. Nope. See white dots? Orbs. Presence tangible can you see it <clears throat> hmm? there's a big one yeah there you go you can't miss that one see I taught a uh, conference one time and Martita was over and she stayed at my house with another lady and uh, <laughs> she came down for breakfast and says man, there's something special about your house. I said, yeah, I know. I said, what are you talking about? She pulled out a video over her bed with these little lights dancing all around. Now, there's good lights and there's bad lights. You know, you go to a rock concert, you'll probably see something similar, but it's a bad one. But that's just a picture of the tangible presence of God. So back up one more. I'm going to tell one more story. Then we're going to get praying with people. No. One more. That one. <clears throat> See that lady? It's, a, it's the, the African-American lady with a white shirt with her back to us, right? That's uh, Dr. Mary Oliver. She's, uh, I think she's retired now, but she was a... Um, did counseling in the uh, school system over in Citrus County. And I didn't know her before, but uh, I was going on a cruise one time. Me, my wife, Tony, and Kelly, we, we liked to cruise. And we were talking about, well, we'll just leave here and go over to the port and take a cruise. But we were going on this one cruise, and I tell you, man, I was just beat. I said, Lord, I don't want to talk to nobody. Don't show me nothing. I don't want to pray for nobody. <laughs> I is tired. So I was just getting ready to go on a cruise. I had this uh, African-American young man call me up. He says, I need deliverance. I called the International Society of Deliverance Ministers, and they gave me your phone number. I said, look, dude, I'm about to go on a cruise. When we get back, we'll touch base. So we went on the cruise. Sure enough, man, God didn't talk to me at all. I slept. I mean, every time I turn around, I go eat. I go eat lunch. Go take a nap. Man, I was sleeping away. Last night of the cruise, we were in watching a show, and 
my back's killing me. I told my wife, I said, I hadn't done anything. There's no reason for my back to hurt. I mean, it was just excruciating. So I, I just said, y'all finish watching the show. I'm, I'm going to go walk around. So I walk um, over and I said, oh, there's the bathroom. Everything happens to me in the bathroom. I walk in the bathroom, walk out, and there's <laughs> her and this other lady talking about spiritual warfare by the, you know, they have the little railway in the center of the ship where you can look up and down and the bathroom's right here and I hear them talking and I said all right what are y'all talking about I said by the way I'm a deliverance pastor you are I've never met one and they were having a women's Christian conference on the cruise and one lady not her the lady she was talking with was a pastor's daughter. We're back to church hurts. This lady's dad was a pastor. He preached on Sunday and sleep with her on Mondays. This other lady's dad was a pastor. He would come in here and preach on Sunday and sleep with his daughter on Mondays. I've heard way worse stories than that. Yep. Well, I kicked in the gear. We chose to forgive. We broke ungodly soul ties. I started breaking stuff. And this lady goes, <laughs> I looked at the other lady. I said, you better go grab some paper towels, honey. She ran to the bathroom and come back. Of course, everybody thinks she's seasick. It wasn't like nobody knew what we were doing. Did deliverance there on the cruise ship. Miraculously, after that, I had zero back pain. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He started speaking to me with pain years ago. I tell you, you'll do anything the Holy Spirit asks not to be in pain. That's not the end of the story. Now I'm floating around in the Bahamas while I'm doing this, right? On the way home last night of the, of the cruise. I get off the ship, my phone's ringing. This lady's already having people call me. I get back home, I call that young man, I said, hey, this is David, the deliverance pastor. He says, I got to ask you a question. I said, what's that? My auntie met a man on a cruise. I said, your auntie's name is not Dr. Mary Oliver, is it? Yep, that's my auntie. Here Dave was whining about not praying with nobody and that brought me more business than anything. <laughs> but God loves us so much. I watched it. We were coming home. I taught a conference in North Carolina. We got lost twice just to get to the place God wanted us. We were in Lake City, 9 o'clock at night, stopped off at Wendy's to grab a hamburger. As soon as my... We put the car in park, I start hurting. What do you want? We walk in, I start looking. Hardly anybody in there, but there's an older lady and a younger lady over there, and I said, I think it's them. So I, we ordered our hamburgers, and I told my friends, I said, that lady over there is killing me. And my friend, what's God going to have you do? Don't know. Sitting there eating, I said, Lord, what do you want? What do you want? Nothing. I get nothing. My wife goes, they're leaving. 
I get up. I said, I feel like God wants me to pray for you. Totally loses it. Can I pray for you? Can I touch you? Which we talked last night. Yes. I said, man, you're awful trusting. I said, I am a pastor. Prayed for her. I can even tell you what I prayed. She bawled the whole time. I said, amen. The mother, her mother bear hugs me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Lake City's at the top of the line. You know, you're over two hours north of where I live. Now, I live in an area called Fruitland Park, but we're surrounded by the villages. It's a huge retirement community. So I said, you know, do y'all live around here? The mother says, no, I live in the villages. <laughs> I said, hi, neighbor. Here's my number. Call me. You know, the, the daughter was an alcoholic. Her fiancé was an alcoholic. They broke up. The mother drove up to Atlanta to pick this girl up. They were driving home. I had to get lost twice. I didn't know the directions. The other guy knew the directions and got lost. Just to intersect. Led the girl to the Lord. Did a little bit of deliverance on her, not much. She since moved to North Carolina. Over the years, I send a message. I was just thinking about you the other day. So, friend, Melinda, use all of that stuff that God has gifted you with to minister to people. I'm going to finish up with this, then we're going to pray with people. Empathy is there for a reason. There's been a couple times over the years I was praying with this lady. Stacy was with me that night. Molested by the friend of the family. And she was little. We were choosing to forgive. We were breaking the ungodly soul tie. And I went from being calm to a crying heap. And what the Lord said, he let me feel it. This is a fraction of what I feel. I mean, I'm wailing. Thank God it only lasted a few seconds. Get back to minister, and a few minutes later, he asked me. And I had already told Stacy, I said, man, I can't handle that. Sure you can. The Lord asked me this time. Do you want it again? Sure. Lasted about 10 seconds. I'm telling you, it was so hard. I said, you're killing me. You have to back it off. People act like God's not an emotional God. He cares. He loves God. He gave it to you for a reason, but don't carry it home with you. I drop it off when I leave the office. Otherwise, it'll kill you. But he'll use it. But I've seen God take something like that. That'll do more in a minute than hours of deliverance. I had this one girl... She, man, she was screwed up. And the Lord told me something. He says, have her look you in the eyes. I'm going to let her see my eyes for a minute. 
I haven't even opened my mouth. I look over at the girl and she's going. I said, look me now. She goes, I can't. I said, in the name of Jesus, look me in the eye. And I can tell you when it connected, man, because I had this big blender swirling my brains around. Lily, I was just like about to pass out. And man, she started bawling. She called her mom after that session and says, I got to tell you what God did for me. She got to look in God's eyes. God loves her. Just a vessel. Kind of like that pipe last night we didn't get to see. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Each one of us in here has a ministry. Does that mean you have to be a deliverance minister? But you can deal with somebody's demons. You can. The perfect Christian walk is salvation, filled with the Spirit, get delivered. Fill it more with the Holy Spirit. That's the perfect walk. God doesn't love one person more than another person. You know, once I got filled with the Spirit, that changed everything. It took me two and a half years to get my religious stinking stuff out of my brain to pray in tongues. But I can tell you, man, when I started praying in tongues, was my discernment. Really seeing. Really hearing. You want God to use you? Be faithful in every little thing he tells you to do. Everything. If you're missing out, go back and do whatever the last thing he told you to do. I know there's people that have a hard time with being filled with the Spirit. But God loves you just as much as everybody else. God wants you to flow in the power of the Holy Spirit like everybody else. That makes sense? So, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come against any experience, trauma, demon that blocks being filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered, overflowing, operating. Everybody agrees with that? Luke 11, 11 through 13. Fathers who are evil know how to give gifts to their children. How much more does God desire to give us the Holy Spirit, right? So if you're willing, lift your hands up. Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. All right. So are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yes. My encouragement to you, and I try not to put people on the spot, get in your prayer room. Tongues is one of the most controversial gifts in the Bible. There's diversities of tongues. There's known languages. We can speak in Spanish, Italian, if the Holy Spirit wanted. We can speak in angelic tongues. But each one of us does have a personal prayer language. And what's the purpose of it? I'm glad you asked. Edifies self. Makes you strong. Makes you bold. Makes you a witness to Judarius, Samaria, and all, all the ends of the earth, the Bible says. And demons hate it. Hate it. You speak about the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and speaking in tongues, wigs them out every time. Every time. So everybody's filled with the Holy Spirit. All those things that interfere with operating in the gifts of the Spirit, and specifically your own prayer language. 
Get out of the way. Don't be like David. It took me two and a half years to get my brain out of the way. But when I did, watch out. And I want the same for you. Heavenly Father, what do you want to do now? Want all my team come up here, at least get on the front row. Where's Martita? Oh, there's Martita. Martita, Connie, Julie, Kelly, Tony. Y'all can sit up here with the pastor. He won't bite too bad. One thing that everybody, 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 everybody deals with. Rejection, abandonment, loneliness. It's a doorway spirit. Let's all the other ones in. There was a couple that weren't here last night, so we're just going to start off with this. Heavenly Father, I bless the ones that weren't here last night to receive a Father's blessing. Bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Bless them to overflowing. Bless them with good relationship. Bless their finances. Bless their body. Bless their relationship first and foremost with you, Father. Father, let them know what a real Father is. A loving Father. All those other things where people have placed on them, spoke down to them, bad about them, we break that off. But we bless them. In the name of Jesus. So the ones that weren't here last night, I gave everybody homework. Everybody do your homework? What was the homework? A list. List of people to forgive. What else? Ungodly soul ties. Traumas. Yeah, Psalm 139. Very good. Anybody go to the beach with Jesus last night? You did. Good. He wear flip-flops or what did he wear? I don't know. Did he bring some stuff to mind? Yes. He told you things about it too, right? He healed it, right? There's more. You get a high five. Put your hand over your belly button. You're just going to agree with me. I'll, I'll list some stuff. You'll just agree with me at the end. Father, I come against rejection, abandonment, loneliness, isolation. The ones that feel like they live in the back 40 with nobody. I bind that. Anger, rage, violence, murder. Control, manipulation, seduction. Things that steal your peace. Accusation, self-condemnation, self-critical. We bind all of that. Fear. Fear of rejection. Perfectionism. Comparing yourself to others. That one gets you in a lot of trouble. You're uniquely made. There's nobody else on the planet like you at all. 
God thinks you're special. He sings over you at night. His thoughts about you are wonderful. All those things that ever told you that you were fat, ugly, stupid. We bind. We tell it to go. In the name of Jesus. We bind those church hurts where you got rejected. From you up to, all the way through your pastor. It's a rough church. It's a rough place. But it's still God's design. Things that interfere with your relationship with others. Spirits within you that make you act in a way to drive others away. Blocking. Everybody agree? Everybody take a deep breath in. I just call that priming the pump. Demons are easy. You close the doorway, take away their legal right, you cast them out. Repeat the process if needed. All right, brother. I'm trying to figure out what God wants right now. You got an idea? I have a wonderful team with me. This is not the David show. It's the Holy Spirit show. But God likes to use people. Pastor, Martita, my team, stand up here. People want prayer for certain things. You can help me if I get some. My wife's giving me a look. And that's okay. Look, everybody has a gift. Dude, I live, eat, and sleep this stuff. My wife does not. Does that make her a bad person? No. But I'm telling you, sometimes her discernment is way better than mine. She's not really geared to sit there and listen to people's junk for a couple hours. I am. Tell me your junk, please. Puke on me. Anybody want some prayer? We're going to come up. We're going to pray. You have a question? No, ready for You're ready for prayer. <laughs> Look, these people have the same Holy Ghost as I do. You ask the Holy Spirit who you're supposed to go to. And God's got a sense of humor. We were ministering in Costa Rica. I had the witchcraft line. <laughs> Nobody else wanted it. <laughs> I looked at Sissy. I said, you're next. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Sissy's adopted, by the way. Biologically, we still think she's my sister, but... We haven't run the DNA test. We have a sick joking between us that my dad had an affair somewhere else. Probably not a great joke, but. <laughs> <laughs> Me and her are just wired a lot alike. We go out to eat, we share the same meal. I don't share it with my wife. She's got different tastes. But I know her, she knows me. Nothing weird, it's just we go. They looked at us last night, we were high five, and they go, Wonder Twin Powers Unite from an old cartoon show. So we're in Costa Rica, the next lady comes up, and I said, You're up, I ain't, I ain't even helping you. This lady comes up, guess what? She was adopted. Dude, I busted out laughing. I said, God busted you. But. 
nobody could minister to her like her. Same Holy Spirit. I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a rough brother. Am I rough? Amen. <laughs> Who do you want to pray for you? All of them. <laughs> My wife calls that double dipping. <laughs> that person was double dipping. And he may be that way. Look, I want to. We'll pray for everybody, whoever wants it. But me and sis, we were working one day, and I look over. Literally, her hand is this long, and I, it looked like it in the natural. I said, "Hey, look at your hand." She goes, ah! "Why the anointing was on her?" Flowed. It's back to normal size now, though. So y'all come on up. Martita, Connie, Tony, Kelly, whoever wants to. If you don't want to, sit there. I don't care. Yeah, I figured you'd get Kelly. You're here. Oh, You're here to help me, okay. Anybody wants prayer for something specifically, okay, come on up. Come on up. Come on up, Pastor. Come on up. Are you leaving me? Nope. nope. <laughs> Go ahead and turn.